Have you ever wondered about how we secure elections? That's a fair question. Security has always been at the heart of what election officials do, which is why each state and jurisdiction has measures in place to ensure security in all phases of the election process. Most people don't see the behind the scenes work that makes it happen, but today we're giving you a peek. Let's start with voter registration, which is a security measure in itself. Registration ensures that only those meeting state eligibility requirements are able to vote and helps keep track of who has cast a ballot in an election. If a voter shows up on election day and believes she is eligible and registered to vote, but, for example, her name does not appear on the registration list or she does not have the required form of ID, she can cast a provisional ballot. Election officials determine whether or not to count provisional ballots after verifying the voter's eligibility. Once you're registered, election officials take a great deal of care to keep your personal data safe. Only authorized personnel have access to the voter registration database. All database traffic is monitored and logs detail each time the database is accessed or changed. Routine backups ensure all data can be restored if any unexpected modifications are made. Though data are public record, personal information is only released in accordance with a state's legal guidelines. Now to the heart of the election process, voting. U.S. elections are conducted independently across thousands of local jurisdictions, each following unique laws and statutes, which means there's no single point of access. Transparency is built into the election process. Almost all processes and procedures require that two or more trained personnel be involved, and these folks have taken an oath to uphold state election laws and protect the security of the election. In addition, representatives of political parties or candidates and sometimes even members of the general public are allowed to observe and monitor activities throughout the election processes. If something does happen on or near Election Day, most jurisdictions have backup plans to make sure voters can still cast their ballots. These plans cover everything from voter registration list backups to moving of poll locations due to a natural disaster or power failure. A good deal of care is taken to ensure voting equipment is safe too. When it isn't being used, voting equipment is stored in a facility accessible only to trained election personnel. Before voting starts, each piece of voting equipment is put through logic and accuracy tests to make sure ballots will be counted correctly, and often the public is invited to observe these tests. Ballots and election equipment are typically secured with tamper evidence seals and transported to polling places in secure containers. And each time they switch hands, it has to be documented. While materials and equipment are in use, they're closely watched by election workers trained to notice and respond to any suspicious behavior. What about the folks who vote by mail? Well, these ballots are protected by state rules and procedures that determine how they must be handled. While steps are taken to ensure that mail ballots are as private as those cast inside a polling place, mailed envelopes must be signed so that the signature on the ballot envelope may be compared to the signature on the voter's registration form. Such signature requirements let election officials make sure these ballots have been filled out by the correct voter. Now to counting those results. Today, most ballots are counted electronically, either by the same voting machines where votes are cast or by devices that scan paper ballots. Most jurisdictions have adopted policies that forbid machines from connecting to the internet in accordance with state and local guidelines. When the polls close on election night, election personnel collect vote counts from each machine and report results to election headquarters. The votes are tabulated at election headquarters before they're reported to the public. Ballots and equipment are then securely transported back to election headquarters. Although we may know who won an election within a few hours, results are not official until the vote is certified by the election office. That happens once the office verifies the ballots from each precinct, early voting, absentee voting, uniformed and overseas citizen ballots, and provisional ballots. These ballots are kept in a secure location as required by law. Once all records are confirmed, election results become official. And many jurisdictions conduct post-election audits to further validate results. So you see, there's a lot that goes into keeping our elections secure. But it's worth it. It means ensuring the voices of the American people are always heard 